Before we get started, Ayla, just a couple of words about you. So you joined the team when? Two years ago. So two I years. So a little later than I did. How, how do you feel about Mainz here? What was the greatest thing that happened to you in these two years? The product release of the Visual Flow Creator, of course. Exactly. And this is what we will be hearing about now. So the stage right. is yours. Good luck. Thank, thanks for the introduction and welcome. I'm happy to be here to present you today one of the MindSphere standard components, the workflow to Visual Flow Creator. Short overview about MindSphere. If your asset machines are connected to MindSphere, sending data via different connectivity channels, you have different possibilities to work with your data in MindSphere. We have the self-service exploration components, which these components, you can start your digital journey immediately without strong programming skills. My colleague Sven will present you the Visual Explorer Z dashboarding tool two presentations after this presentation. If you are a little bit more advanced, we have different analytics features, which Michael present you after this presentation. With the Visual Flow Creator, you can automate your digital solution. You can prepare your data for further analysis or visualizations. You can build complex rules and trigger different actions. In the next 15 minutes, I will show you how fast and easy it is to build such a solution. Therefore, I have prepared a short use case. Imagine tomorrow is the Champions League final and you have invited a lot of friends to watch the football game. So you want to be prepared. That's why you go to your local supermarket and store to buy the favorite beer of your friends. But the store owner told you that there are some delivery problems in the brewery and you can't buy the beer you wanted. That's really bad. It's bad for the brewery manufacturer, it's bad for the store owner, because they lose a lot of revenue. Uh, tomorrow is the Champions League final, and they can earn a lot of money, because everybody needs beer yeah, for watching the game. And it's bad for you, because your friends are really frustrated because you haven't their favorite beer. Mindsphere will take care of that the supply chain is moving, and that the brewery manufacturer can deliver in time, and that you can buy the beer you wanted. Let us go more into the details of the brewery. We have a beer tank, we have a pump, a fluid flow meter and valves, and a bottling machine. The pump is pumping the beer from the beer tank to the bottling machine in the first floor. In the worst case, we have a dry run of the pump. That means we have a closed valve, or we have an obstruction in the pipe. What happened then? If we have obstruction in the pipe or a closed valve, there is no beer uh, cooling the pump while the pump is pumping. The pump gets warm, gets hot, and in the worst case, it has to be replaced. Then we have an unplanned downtime that we want to avoid because we want to buy our beer in the store, right? That's why we monitor different parameters of the pump. We measure the pressure before the pump and after the pump. We measure the fluid flow, the motor current, and the temperature of the stuffing box. We from Mindsphere now want that the supply chain is moving and we want to build a digital solution where the service technician gets a notification if there a dry run starts. So that the supply chain is moving on and we can board our beer. Let us go to the live demo to build such a digital solution. So now I will log into Mindsphere. And what you will see is the launchpad of Mindsphere. It's like your starting point in Mindsphere. And now we select the Visual Flow Creator. With one click on the tile, the application starts. Short introduction to the application. On the left side, you see your node palette, which is clustered in different categories. We have input node, we have output nodes, we have specific Mindsphere function and analytic nodes. Every node is responsible for a specific step. And if you combine these different nodes together, you create your workflow and your digital solution. 
In the middle, you have your worksheet area, where you place the different nodes per drag and drop functionality. On the right side, you have an info and a debug tab. I will explain during the creation of the workflow, because both tabs are helping the workflow creator. Back to our pump. We want to create a digital solution where the service technician of the brewery gets a notification if a dry run starts. We always start with an inject node. And now you see what happened to the info tab. Now you get information in the info tab to the selected node, so to the inject node. The info tab gives give you details what is the node about and how it should be configured. In the next step, we have to read the time series data. So we measure different data points on the pump and have sent it to the MindSphere. That's why we want to read now the time series data. So we select a read time series node, combine these nodes together, and with a double click on the node, a configuration menu starts. And also the info tab has changed because I have selected now the read time series node. We select our asset. In this case, it's our pump. We select the motor current variable, click on K, and say in the mode, we want to read in a period way of one minute. We click on done. In the next step, we have to filter for our time series data. Why we have to filter? When the pump is in a normal mode, the motor current is 50 ampere. If we have a dry run, the motor current goes rapidly down. So we look if we have something in the pallet, and there we have a filter node. If you are not sure how it should be configured, you have this info tab, and there you get information. With a, uh, with a double click, the configuration menu starts. And now we go element dot motor current, because that's the variable we are interested in, is lower than 45, because then we know the dry run has started. We click on Done. And that you see and understand what your workflow is doing, you have the possibility to see it with a debug node. And for everybody who has thought about the two tabs, there's a debug node and there's a debug tab. Maybe it fits together, and of course it does. If we now combine these both nodes with the debug tab, and we go to the debug node, and now I have select my current flow, and I save this workflow now, then it's automatically deployed to the cloud, and I trigger this workflow, what we see here? We see in the first step, we read the time series data. That's why you get the information about the time series data from the last minute of the motor current of the pump. And we get an empty array from the filter node. Why we get an empty array? Because at the moment, the pump is in a normal mode. So when we filter for the data, there are no values under 45. That's why the array is empty. When we have values under 45, then we have not an empty array. What will happen if we now say, OK, now I want to give a notification to my service technician? Then we will get an email every time the workflow is executed. I don't want to get an email every time when the workflow is executed. I only want to get an email if there's really the problem. That's why I need a switch node. We put the switch node after the filter node. And now we say, if it's bigger than 0, because then we have an array what have values in it, values which are higher than 0, then we want to have a notification. We decide for an email notification. We put in the last step the email not node to the workflow and configure the email node. We define the recipients. In our case, or now, I would choose my email address. But I have to write my name in the right way. 
I give it a subject. So the service technician should know what happened. So alarm, pump, pump runs dry. And it's a high priority because we want to go, our supply chain is moving on that we have beer. We click on done and we save it. But now the workflow is only executed if I trigger the workflow. I don't want to sit for my laptop in front of my laptop and click every time the workflow. Now we will automate our solution and that's really easy. With one click on the inject node, we can choose a repeat mode. At the moment, it's in a manual way. And now we say this workflow should be executed every 10 seconds. We click on done and we save it. And now it's deployed to the cloud and the workflow is running every 10 seconds. And what I will do now, with my mobile phone now, it's really live. I will simulate a dry run of the pump. The pump is located in Erlangen, and I can, sim I can simulate this dry run of the pump. And if we have all configured in the right way, then I should get now an email notification because the values go down, and I should get an information. It just takes a few seconds because it has to be simulated. Okay. And now the magic happens. The workflow is executed, and it doesn't matter if I'm locked into MindSphere or not. And now we go to the email. And here we see our alarm is coming with the alarm pumps runs dry. And I see also the values, which are going down. Yeah? Because the motor current goes rapidly down from 50 ampere to the 30 one of the motor current. Now the service technician can immediately start the repairing of the pump. We have no unplanned downtime. The brewery manufacturer can deliver in time to the store owner. You can buy the favorite beer of your friends. Your friends will be happy. And you have a nice evening. What we have seen is how fast and easy it is to build such a digital solution without programming. We haven't, run, haven't written any line of code. It was only configuration and the knowledge of the use case. If you have further questions to the tool or how the visual flow creator could solve maybe your problem, you will find me at the booth in the Mindsphere launch on the left side. And I'm excited to hear your use case, how MindSphere could solve your supply chain. Thanks for the attention.